Hey guys, it's Kevin again, and this is my review for Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. And what Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom is essentially about is basically very early on in the film, uh, we see the character of Claire. She is told that the volcano is going to erupt and it is going to destroy all of uh, Isla Nublar, and that is where all the dinosaurs, of course, are currently populated. So she and Owen team up, and they have to try to do their best to find a new home for all the dinosaurs, and that's really all I'm going to say. So, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom in general, I was very conflicted uh, with this movie. Now, I actually did rewatch both Jurassic Park and Jurassic World before this. Uh, Jurassic Park is a classic. It, you know, I watched it once before and I wasn't, like, the biggest fan of it. But on a rewatch, I absolutely love it. I think it is a near masterpiece. I think definitely it is, you know... Definitely, it's a huge stepping stone uh, for Spielberg, just what he was able to do with that film. But it also had very intelligent conversation on just, um, you know, dinosaurs as a species in general. And kind of giving them, you know, uh, these sort of human emotions and things like that. And really getting into the psychology of just, you know, organisms in general. And I think they did that very well in that last movie. Direct However, I view that film as a really great standalone film. I never really saw it as a movie that needed a franchise. So Jurassic World, you know, while I didn't necessarily dislike that movie, I did find enjoyment in it. It was, for the most part, forgettable fun. I think it was much better than I expected it to be, for sure. But it's nothing that I'm going to praise and say, oh, it's this amazing movie and I was really hyped for Fallen Kingdom because truthfully I wasn't. Was I hoping this could be a better film? Absolutely. I definitely thought they had all the tools to make a really great film. It's unfortunate when I tell you guys that Fallen Kingdom for me uh, keep in mind I haven't seen the second and the third one, is the worst film I have seen in this franchise. This is a very terrible film that does have some good ideas behind it, but just in general is honestly a bit of a clusterfuck, and we're gonna get into right now, starting off with the cast. Now let me just say right now, there are a lot of problems with this movie, but the cast, for the most part, actually isn't one of them. Uh, Chris Pratt, right off the bat, one of the most likable actors in Hollywood. I really liked him in the last movie, you know, I really liked seeing him train all of the velociraptors and things like that. That was definitely very fun to watch, and here, I, again, I enjoyed him in the movie. I do think he does do a good job. Um, Chris Pratt is just one of those actors where you really can't take your eyes off of him. He's a very charismatic and just a very watchable actor and very likable in that sense. And, you know, Owen as a character doesn't really go through a lot in this movie, which we'll get to a little bit later, but I definitely did like him here, and I still do think he did a really good job. He's just one of those actors where no matter what he does, he can't really give a bad performance, and I do think he did an overall really good job here. Bryce Dallas Howard, on the other hand, uh, I don't think she's like an amazing actress or anything. I've said this many times before. I really don't think she's that great of an actress, but she's good in the series. Uh, for what she has to do, she is good here. The character we'll get to a little bit later, but I did think that she did a good job here overall. Her and Chris Pratt's chemistry, it's very similar to the first one. When they're supposed to be just friends and things like that, it works very well. Uh, when they try to go into more romantic territory, it feels very forced. I do think the two of them do work together, but it just feels very forced. Like, they want you to root for these two, and I just really don't. I see them more as friends than I do as a romantic couple, and I still feel the same way after watching this movie. And then the rest of the cast here, I thought overall uh, did an okay job. Rafe Spall, he's like the main villain in this movie. He does what he needs to do, really cartoony, and we'll get to his villain a little bit later, but I really didn't think he was anything that great. Daniela Panita, I mean, she's fun, I guess. She's sort of like the spunky sort of um, sidekick that is helping out Owen and Claire and trying to you know, get the dinosaurs uh, off the island in a sort of um, just, you know, a very easy manner and things like that in a way that won't be too chaotic, and I do think she did a good job with that. Justice Smith, on the other hand, no. No. I mean, I've liked this guy before, I really have, but 
he was awful in this movie. They try so hard to make this guy the comedic relief of this film, and it just falls so incredibly flat. People were talking about the kids in the last movie, and honestly, I would take them over Justice Smith. He easily was the worst part of this movie for me. Every time he came on, I was cringing so hard. I hated everything about this character. I was just really waiting for him to either die on the island or get eaten by a dinosaur or something. I just, I could not stand this character. We'll talk about him a little bit later, but I was really annoyed by him. He really wasn't great here. All the other actors in this movie pretty much range from okay to whatever. Toby Jones, James Cromwell, you know, they're good actors overall. Jeff Goldblum, a lot of people are going to be asking about him. Uh, I mean, he's not in this movie for very long at all. He's in the movie for about two minutes, but I guess he did what he needed to do, and that's really all I gotta say about the cast. They're average for the most part. I do want to highlight Isabella Sermon. Very good in this film. I did like her um, as a, I did like her as an actress. I do think she did a good job overall, um, and I did like where they ended up. You know, the twist with her, I really didn't like at all. There is a whole thing with her character that I really couldn't stand, but I do think she did a good job in this film overall, and that's really all I gotta say about the cast. Now let's get to the directing and the writing, because oh boy do I have a lot to say when it comes to this. Now, let me just say right off the bat, J.A. Bayona, he's a very talented director. I have seen him direct things before, he's very good at what he does, and he is definitely not the problem here. I do think that he did have a very good tone for this film. Right off the bat, they established that this is a much darker film than the first one, and for the most part, he does sustain that. It stays a lot darker. I think the tone was well-balanced in that sense. Things that feel urgent, they definitely do feel urgent, and I do think he did a good job with the tone. This is definitely not his fault. The directing is... Definitely, for the most part, what I expected it to be for this movie. You know, again, there are a lot of things I can complain about. J.A. Bayona is not one of them. I do think his directing was pretty good here. The writing, on the other hand, that's a different story. Uh, because that's really, I think, the biggest problem with this film. Now, I haven't really faulted this guy before, uh, Colin Trevorrow. I think definitely, I, you know, I thought he did a good job directing the last movie. Not the best job overall, but I really didn't get the hate towards him. After this film... Yeah, um, that's a different story. He is absolutely single-handedly fucking up this series. I mean, if there is anything that they can do with, you know, to improve the series overall, just get rid of this guy. This guy, he does not know what he's doing. He is absolutely ruining the series, and he is definitely the one to blame here. I don't really know what he is doing from here on out, but this stray is so far away from the Jurassic Park series that it doesn't feel like a Jurassic Park movie. Now, right off the bat, the biggest problem with this movie is that one, they tell you from the beginning that this volcano is going to erupt, and there's nothing wrong with that, but the way they do it, they make it seem like that's going to be most of the movie. Most of the movie is going to be them going on Isla Nublar, and them trying to get the dinosaurs off the island, get them a secure location. You think that's really how it's going to play out. Unfortunately, that's not the case. This happens very early on. The entire island is destroyed. Now, I, this is not a spoiler because the trailer, the second trailer that came out, spoiled most of this. Uh, most of this movie doesn't take place on the island. That island is uh, destroyed uh, very early on, and uh, at least for me... Again, this was something I expected. I expected for that island to be completely destroyed. Uh, again, the trailers very much did hint at that, and yeah, it, it's gone. I mean, the, everything, you know, the Jurassic World, that's all gone, and again, that is a good idea, but the way they go about it in this movie was just so wrong. They really took everything that people really complained about in the last movie, and they incorporated it here. All the stuff where there are people that want want to militarize the dinosaurs and use them as weapons, check, that's still here. Cartoony villains like Vincent D'Onofrio, oh, they really rev up on that. Every single character, despite maybe Owen and Claire and a couple other exceptions, almost all of them are cartoons. I mean, almost all of them feel like these 
uh, characters that are straight out of a Jurassic Park cartoon series. They do not feel like real human beings. And honestly, I feel bad for complaining about Vincent D'Onofrio because looking back, he was nowhere near as unbearable as these guys were. These guys were horrible. I hated these characters, and I just couldn't stand any of them, to be honest with you. And virtually all the villains in this movie are just complete cartoon characters, specifically Ted Levine's character. All he is here to do in this movie is to tranquilize these dinosaurs, get them under his control, and use them for military weapons. And that's really it. And there is one scene with him in this movie where I audibly groaned. I just thought, how dumb can you possibly be? And there are several characters that are like that in this movie. I understand that these guys are outnumbered and they don't realize how powerful these dinosaurs really are, but this is a whole other level of just complete incompetence on their part, and I truly couldn't believe how dumb some of these characters really were. And like I said, all of these villains, they're just corporate pieces of shit, and there's really nothing to latch onto with any of their characters, despite the fact that Lockwood has a sort of loose connection to Hammond. That's really all there is in terms of, you know, likability with these characters. But Hammond isn't even there. He's gone. Lockwood is like, I, I understand, like, he's the connection to Hammond and things like that, but there's really nothing else to latch onto besides that, unfortunately. And like I already said, the other characters aren't really that great either. Owen and Claire in this movie especially very much pissed me off because I did like them in the last movie. It's not like I didn't. I thought that they were good characters, but I expected that with this second film, they could maybe develop them a little bit more, go into more of who Owen was um, before he was just a raptor trainer, go who Claire was, you know, before she tried to carry on the legacy of, you know, what John Hammond was really trying to do, you know, j just try to develop these characters a little bit more, and they just don't. If anything, there's less with their characters than there was in the last movie. Claire, especially in this film, very much pissed me off. I mean, just the fact that she's going to put her hands in the trust of these guys, and the fact that she always sees the good in them, it just makes her look like an idiot when you realize what they actually want to do, and what their actual plan is. It just, it makes her look really dumb, and I honestly don't really like the Claire character anymore, despite, you know, especially with the choices that she made in this movie, I'm really not a fan of her anymore, and I really think they kind of ruined her here. Uh, any sort of likability that she had, yeah, that's kind of gone. I don't really feel that way towards her character anymore, and it's unfortunate, because again, I do think Bryce Dallas Howard is quite good in this series, but if anything, I think they made her more unlikable here than they already did. And the other two people that they were with, forget about it. These two two guys, I mean, the, these two characters that they are, that are sort of helping them out, Daniel Panita and Justice Smith, they really need to go. Again, I, I don't think that acting-wise, Danielle Panita was bad, but like I said, all she is in this movie is just the badass that is always on top of things, and is always trying to do what she can to help out the dinosaurs, and, you know, basically calm Justice Smith down. Justice Smith is a different story. Like I said, almost every single scene with his character I found very annoying. All he does in this movie is just cry and whine the entire time. Every single scene it was just like, is this the T-Rex? Is this the T-Rex? Is this the T-Rex? He's always on edge throughout the movie and I'm just thinking, why did you even apply to this job if you were so skittish about encountering these dinosaurs? You knew the task at hand, you knew what you would be dealt with, why did you even sign up for this? I just, I really did not understand the point of this character, despite trying to add some levity into scenes that really didn't need it. There are so many scenes in this film where he'll scream at the top of his lungs, and like I said, I, there was a point in this movie where he asked, um, you know, did I die yet? And I legitimately said out loud in my theater, I wish you did, because this character I found to be just so pointless, and at the end of the day, doesn't really contribute anything to the story whatsoever, and I really wasn't a fan of him at all. Like I said, I found uh, the... Uh, other character that Owen and Claire meet up with, I found the little girl to be a much more endearing character, despite of where they end up taking her in this movie. Her twist is really dumb. I really found her to be a much better character overall.
Also, the humor in this movie, besides the stuff from Justice Smith, even stuff that's not from him, falls incredibly flat. So flat to the point where I really can't recall one time where I actually laughed in this movie. I might have chuckled a couple times, but that's just because Chris Pratt is a very likable guy, and he has this really funny presence about him where... Even if he has bad writing, his jokes can still be funny. But in this movie, the comedy really wasn't working for me. I, like I said, I really can't think of one time where I actually did laugh. And compared to the last movie where I actually did think they had some genuinely fun moments, uh, this is definitely very disappointing to say. And again, one of the many things that fell flat in this movie. But really, at the end of the day, those problems, while they are bad, and while they definitely did upset me, that's not really my biggest problem with this movie. The biggest problem with this movie is that they need to slow the fuck down. That's really the biggest thing with this film, is that this film, throughout the whole film, they're always moving at 150%. They're always going at rapid speed, and you barely get any time to really digest what's going on here. We meet up with Owen and Blue, and there's this really great scene with them that I actually really did like, and they don't really go much of anywhere with it because it felt like they got on the island, and then immediately the volcano erupted. It felt like there really wasn't much time to really understand the weight of this situation and really understand what was at stake here. And yes, I understand that, you know, the urgency of what's going on, but I didn't really feel like like they did much with it, honestly. Yes, sure, the island is gone and the dinosaurs need to find a new place to live, but it just felt like they didn't really give us enough time um, to fully flesh out everything, and I think that definitely was a problem there. Um, and I think really, like I said, going into that mansion, this should have never been in the trailers. There was way too much stuff in the trailer. There's so many stuff in this movie where, if you've seen the trailer, congratulations, you've already spoiled uh, most of the movie for yourself. Which, again, that's not really our fault. You know, when you go to movies, you're most likely going to see the trailer of this film. It's a big blockbuster film. It really is a colossal failure on whoever edits trailers, because most of the third act of this movie is in the trailer, and that very much did disappoint me. I think they definitely could have kept a lot of this stuff hidden, and again, I, this stuff that should be spoilers, they're not because they were in the trailer. There are some stuff that are spoilers in this movie, believe it or not. There's one twist in particular that's really dumb, but it surprisingly wasn't in the trailers. And I say surprising because that's really how much was spoiled in those trailers. And, uh, you know, that definitely, like I said, did disappoint me overall. Uh, in terms of good stuff, is there good stuff in this movie? Yes, there is stuff I did enjoy here. There's one moment in this film where I actually did feel was definitely kind of sad, and it definitely was a very heartfelt moment, and it, I did get that urgency that they wanted me to feel, but it's one moment, and it involves this one dinosaur and this amazing shot of, like, the smoke, and that was more due to the cinematography. Again, it's not really due to the writing. The writing, like I said, is just a mess in this film. I sincerely don't know what Colin Trevorrow is trying to do with this series anymore. To me, it seems like he's trying to make this sort of, like, a Planet of the Apes type series, when that's not at all what this series was supposed to be. This movie is so focused on, like, animal rights and things things like that, and how we need to treat animals equally, and that's really never been what this franchise is about. It's about, like I said, giving human characteristics the things that are human, and th it's not really about that anymore, and I think they kind of single-handedly destroyed this series because of that. Where they end up going with it, I'm really not that excited about, to be honest with you, and it just didn't really work for me. And here's the thing, the third act of this movie can work. There are definitely ways where you can make this work, where it's inside a mansion and things like that, but the way they approach it, it felt less like a Jurassic Park movie and more just like a generic monster film. It felt like all the intelligence and all of the style was just kind of stripped away here, and it just did not feel like Jurassic Park, and I was very let down by it, and like I said, even more let down that it just felt kind of unnecessary. Uh, towards the end of this film, there's some really cool things that happen, but honestly, it did feel like a bit of a rehash from the last movie. If you've seen the climax in the last film, 
it is almost identical to the climax in this movie, and I was very disappointed by that. It really doesn't stick out on its own at all, and I really felt that the third act, like I said, it just turned into a generic monster movie, and it really didn't do anything for me. There's even a scene in this movie where there's a jump scare. There's literally a jump scare in this movie, and it's false. And I was baffled that they actually went in this direction. There is a false jump scare in this movie, and I think that just goes to show how out of touch this series has really become and how much it doesn't really feel like Jurassic Park anymore. I will give the movie this, though. Cinematography-wise, this film is still very good. The visuals are still fantastic, especially shots of when that volcano erupts. Uh, it just feels very tangible, and that's something I did feel with Jurassic World. You know, you still feel like you can touch these dinosaurs, and that they very much are there, and I think they did a very good job with that when it comes to the cinematography. I think there are some really great visuals in this film, particularly in the third act of the movie. There's some really great stuff, and I definitely really did enjoy it. The score, I also really love. I think Michael Giacchino really went all out with this score, uh, especially in the first, in the, you know, when, uh, Tension is high. The main score in this film, I honestly adored, and I really did feel that urgency. It's pretty sad when I felt more urgency from a score than I really did from the writing or the way they would convey the characters and things like that. I really only felt urgency when that score would play or a couple of moments here or there. And the editing to this film, like I said, the film is always moving at such a rapid speed that you really never feel like you have time to digest anything. There's this really stupid twist with Isabella Sermon's character that I know I've alluded to several times, but they brush it off so quickly. It doesn't really go anywhere. And first, like I, like I said, I thought it was a really dumb twist to begin with, but I at least expect them to do something with it. They do nothing. Nothing with this twist. It, it's almost like this twist didn't even matter. Like, it wasn't even that important to what was going on, and they acted like it was this huge thing, and then they just gloss over it immediately, and they go back to more corporate bullshit that I just didn't really care about. There's so much betrayals, particularly with B.D. Wan's character, where they end up going with him. I don't know what they're doing with this character, but I definitely know I don't like it. I am not at all a fan of where they're going with this character. Like I said, guys, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom is just the definition of a very unnecessary sequel. Most of this movie feels like it is just setting up the next film. A lot of this does feel very exposition heavy. It feels like there's a lot of stuff going on that could be interesting, but they're just getting to it way too quickly. And at the end of the day, a lot of the things that go down in this film feel kind of pointless. They feel like they didn't really need to happen, and... I think that's much worse than a sequel that destroys the franchise. Like I said, Trevorrow is really, I think, the person to blame here. He does not know what he's doing. He does not know how to write this series. And I truly do think he is kind of messing everything up. This was everything I couldn't want in a sequel. And I really don't, especially like I said, the way things do end, I really don't know if I'm excited for another Jurassic Park movie. I know it's... It's sad to say, but I really think the series has run its course. I, I just don't think there's much more to dive into. Where they're going with it, I'm really not excited for, and I just don't really know where else you can really go with it from here. But either way, guys, like I said, I really was very disappointed with this film. I wasn't really looking forward to it that much to begin with, but I, I was at least hoping it would be a fun ride, and it is anything but that. It is everything that I was worried Jurassic World was really going to be. It barely focuses on the main situation and the characters. It's much more focused on corporate business shit that just simply does not matter as much. It has this really dumb message that it is so reliant on and it really pissed me off I have to say but overall guys like I said I really couldn't stand this film at all there are good things here and there but for the most part this is everything I was just very worried that this uh the last movie was really going to be and I am going to give Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom overall a D plus like I said, there definitely are places they can take this series in hell. Maybe they can surprise me, but the fact that Colin Trevorrow is directing the next movie and, you know, especially knowing that he is still taking over this series, 
that has me very concerned. And the way they left things off, I just don't really know where else you can really go with this series from here. But other than that, guys, that's really it for my review of Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Let me know what you guys thought of this movie overall. Left your thoughts in it. Uh, keep in mind, once again, I haven't seen the second and the third one. So while I might be very, you know, while you might be like, oh, this isn't as bad as the third one, I haven't seen the third one. So I can't really say that. But that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. See you guys in my next video. And I will see you guys for that. Okay, bye.